Welcome back everyone to another video and in today's video we shall create two functionalities. First one if we look at the object and the line trace does interact with it you can see it does draw an outline around the object. And the second thing is on the right bottom side of the screen you can see press E to pick up item. And that works also for the chest as well. But well, for the NPC I only wanted to have a text and I don't draw the outline around it. So first let me show you an example what it is that we are actually creating. And what we will do is essentially create a copy of this, just a visual part, not the actual mesh itself. And uh, we're going to have two of those copies. So one of those is going to go to the left top and the other one is going to go a little bit to our right bottom. This will allow us to create an outline for this. In order for us to make this happen we need to enable a setting in our project settings. So let's go to the project settings. Let's look for the rendering tab over here and let's scroll down till we find the post processing and here on the custom depth stencil pass we want to change this from enabled to enabled with stencil. And now we need to create the actual material which is going to allow us to uh, draw these outlines to create these copies uh, if you will. So I'm going to right click create a new material and I'm going to call this outline mat. Before we actually create the functionality inside of this material we need to assign this to our post processing volume. So if you don't have one make sure to add one. So look for post process value, drag it in and make sure that it's big enough that it covers your uh, entire world. Uh, I already have one so I'm gonna look for it. So the post processing value. So let's scroll down till we find rendering features and the first one is the post process materials and it, by default it has zero elements in the RI, make sure you add one and then you can choose the asset reference. Uh, and then you can select this material right here. Now technically uh, whenever we would change uh, the rendering information about the mesh, so in the rendering if we show the advanced and if we would enable the custom depth, enable this and set a specific value then this would start to create us an outline. But before we actually demonstrate this we need to create the functionality inside of this material. So the first thing what we want to do is select the base material and change its material domain from surface to post process. And now let's right click and let's look for a node called scene texel size. And then this will represent the size of the outer line and I want to have a possibility to change its size. So I'm going to multiply this value and I'm going to add a scalar. So I'm going to hold S and click and this allows me to create a scalar. Let's call this size and by default I'm going to type in 1 uh, but we will be able to change this later. So this goes into the B route and then this value right here we will want to add. So I will hold A, add. And for the B route over here what we need is the screen position. So we need to know the position and we need to use our viewport UVs. Now this is going to be for a single uh, instance. So like I told you before we will have two duplicates. So now let's create the second one. So from this multiply, multiply value we want to multiply again. But uh, in this case we want to multiply this with minus one so that we would receive one positive value and one negative. And then just like previously we want to add again. So let's add the viewport UVs to this. Now we need to add the actual stencils themselves. So let's create the scene texture. Now let's select this node and here we can change the scene texture ID and here we need to look for the custom stencil one. Now we're going to need two of those so let's copy this and so for the bottom we use this add and for the top one we use the top add like so. Then from both of the color return values we will want to mask these values. So let's drag from this and let's type in mask. So component mask and we want to only have a single channel so that we would get a single value instead of having a vector and we want to do the same thing for both of these and then we want to compare the distances between those. So distance utility node A and B like so and from over here we will want to do a if. So over here we are passing along the stencil size 
creating its positioning and for the B route we want to specify our stencil value. So I'm going to right click this and I'm going to create a constant and for this one I'm going to type in 2. Uh, make sure to remember this number because this is the ID that we will need to set to every R mesh which will need to have this outline. So let's plug that into the B route and also we want to plug this into A equals B as well. Now for these other two routes what we want to return is again a constant and we want to return 0 so basically a black frame which will not be drawn. Now next again from the if we can create another if and for the B route we can use our zero value now in this pin right here we want to provide the color that we want so I'm gonna hold uh, 4 and click to create a vector with an alpha channel I'm gonna set my color I want mine to be completely blue and then we can plug this into the color the next thing that we need so that we can actually draw uh, because this will simply color the whole screen as of right now and we need to get the default view that we get from the game so I'm gonna again right click and look for another scene texture and for this one, for its ID, we want to set this to be post process input zero. So basically the thing that we see by default. So our viewport, our actual game screen. And then for this color, we can plug that into the A equals B and A is smaller than B. So now this will calculate our values and only draw an outline and have our mesh completely visible. So this will go to our emissive color. And now if we would save this, and then if we select uh, any of the meshes inside the post processing value scroll down till the rendering show advanced enable the render custom depth and pass along the ID which was 2 in my case you can see this creates us an outline now as of right now this outline is very dark and I would like mine to be a little bit translucent so what I will do is simply from the color itself I'm gonna run a add node and I'm gonna add the color to the post process input 0 so that this would blend the color and the actual uh, things that we see a little bit together and now if we would save that now you can see that this is a little bit more translucent now we need to actually uh, launch this material once we hover over any of our objects so what I will do is remove this uh, from this mesh so I will undo this and uh, let me actually change this to zero as well there we go so now we're back to default in order to uh, create these outlines I'm gonna create a new interface so that I can create outlines around the chest and items and backpack but not the uh, shop NPC so I'm gonna create a new blueprint interface and I'm gonna call this outline interface and inside of this interface I'm gonna rename this function to be the outline interaction and I want to pass along a single input which is gonna be a boolean and I'm gonna call this on uh, basically this will represent whether we want to turn the outline on or off now we can close this and now we can open up any of the actors that we want to have the outline of so I'm gonna select the chest and I'm gonna edit the chest blueprint go to the class settings and add the outline interface now we can compile and save this and let's create the actual event for this so now I'm gonna right click and run the event outline interaction and on on I'm gonna do an if branch check and I will drag in the mesh that I want to draw the outline for and now from the mesh I want to look for the so let's look depth so we want the set render custom depth and we want to enable that on true and also from the same mesh we want to so depth the set custom depth stencil value which in my case I set to be 2 so that basically is kind of like an ID so for different uh, things you might have different IDs now for the bottom route I'm gonna copy exactly the same nodes connect the execution and reconnect the target itself as well uh, but in this case I'm gonna have the value at false and the second value is gonna be zero so now we can compile and save this and technically we are done with the uh, actor so we are setting the actors properties correctly but now we need to actually launch this interaction so I will go to my third person character and I'm gonna create a new line trace by channel but uh, to make life a little bit easier for me I will need a lot of the same nodes from the interaction on keyboard key E I'm just gonna simply copy 
Now we just copy all, all the function and create a new function and let's call this non-stop trace. And now we can just simply paste that in and let's connect the execution pin and we want to do a couple of things a little bit differently. So the first thing that we need is a variable which will hold a reference to the actor that we have drawn the outline for. So let's create that and let's call this outline actor. And this one I'm gonna make a just a regular actor type and also, well, we haven't created anything yet for that, but I want to display on the screen uh, something like press key E to pick up item or whatever. So for that one, I'm going to add another variable and I'm going to call this interaction text. Let's call this interaction text and let's let's make this into a string. Now, what I want to do next is actually remove these interaction interfaces and the self references as well. And I also want to remove this or boolean check because I want to do an if branch check for every single one of my tags because for different types of things, I want to have different type of interaction text. So now let's connect our falses. And now depending on the tag, I want to set the interaction text. And let's say for this one, it's gonna be pickup. Then for the NPC, I'm gonna write, let's say like talk to NPC. And then on the bottom one, it's going to be open chest. The next thing that I wanna do is actually drag in the outline actor. And I want to check if this thing is not equal, so exclamation mark equals with the hit actor. So I want to check if this is something new, something different than we had previously. So I will do an if branch check on this. And I'm going to connect the execution pins a little bit later. So now I will drag in the outline actor once more. And I want to check if this thing is still valid. Because if we pick up an item, it's no longer existing. And we actually don't even need to remove the outline from it. But if it's still valid, then that means that we want to run our outline interaction message using the uh, reference from the uh, outline actor as a target and for the on we want to leave this at false since we want to remove the outline then we want to run the same node once more but for the tag we want to use our hit actor so the newly found actor and we want to set on to be true since we want to draw an outline for that and also we want to at the end set our outline actor to be the uh, reference from the hit actor now, if the actor is not valid, that means we don't need to remove the outline. We can just simply go to the next node and create an outline for the newly found uh, item. Now, what I want to do is copy these three nodes right here. Oh, let's copy them over here. And now we want to, at the end of this, we want to set our outline actor and we will leave the input empty so that the, this would basically forget about the reference for that specific item. So this will allow us only to remove the outline and not draw it for anything. So now let's see what do we need to connect is first and foremost, if I am talking to an NPC, I don't want to draw an outline on him. So from this one, I will go to the bottom is valid. And also from the false route right here, I'm going to go to the bottom as well. So if we are not interacting with any of these two, then that means that, well, we don't need an outline for that. And that means, of course, that from these two, we want to run our if branch check, which checks if the actor is a different actor instead of the previous one, and then it draws an outline for it. So there we go. That's just about it. Go to our event graph. Let's look for our on begin place so that we can actually loop this. So what we want to do is just like over here, we want to set a timer by a function name. Then for the function name, we want to use our non-stop trace. So I'm going to copy that over here. And for the time, I'm going to do something very small. So like 0.01 and I'm going to make sure that this is looping. So now let's give it a try. Let's go up to the chest and you can see if we look at the chest, this creates us an outline and we can actually see this through our character as well. So it's going to be a lot easier uh, for players to notice that they can interact with the object. So now let's set up the same thing for the backpack as well. So let's select our backpack master. Let's go to the class settings and add our outline interface. And then we can just simply from the BP chest, we can uh, copy the outline interaction, the whole event. 
Let's copy that and make sure to, after you add an interface, you compile your, your blueprint. Otherwise the events might glitch out, these interaction out interface events. So now we've copied this information in here, but for my backpack, for example, I have two meshes. So what I need to do is I have set this for the base mesh and I'm gonna drag the second mesh in as well. And I will copy these nodes the same way with the same values, connect the executions and then reconnect the targets for these four over here. Now we are done with the backpack so we can go to our pickup master so I'm going to select the pickup master and again in the class settings add an outline interface compile and paste in uh, well I've pasted only these values so that's not what I want I want these ones over here the whole event there we go Compile and save this and let's now give it a try. So you can see this creates an outline, this creates an outline and all of our pickups create an outline as well. So now that's that for for the outline. Now I want to add another thing which would be in my UI folder. I'm going to open up my UI HUD which is basically open at all times for me. And what I want to add is just a simple horizontal box which will contain a text which will tell us like hey listen pick up, press this button and you will do something. So let's create the spot for that. This seems to be a good location. I'm going to add a text field for this. And so let's let's justify let's make this into the middle and let's set this to auto and the text will be press E2 and then I'm gonna have a space because I'm gonna have another text which is not gonna consist of the space so I need a space over here and I'm gonna set the same styling I have for the other text. Now that I've done that I'm gonna duplicate this text so now I have these two texts and let's set our second text to be our interaction text and to do so we need to create a binding for the text content. So let's create a new binding and let's see. So we want to first cast to the third person character and object is get owning player pawn and then from that one we want to get our interaction text and then we can just simply print that out. Now the issue is with this that well it's going to be visible at all times even when the text is not existing. So what we want to do is create a visibility binding. So in the graph I'm going to select the whole horizontal box with the, the whole content and I'm going to scroll down till I find the behavior and on the visibility I will create a new binding. Now this will allow us to uh, basically show and hide the text. What I want to do is actually copy these nodes right here so that everything goes a little quicker and then I want to check if the interaction text is equal and let's let's type in none so that we have one uh, default text which would represent that this this should be hidden so if this is true then I want to set the visibility to be collapsed if this is false if it's something different then I want to show it and set it to be visible now we need to actually set this none value somewhere so let's go back to our third person character and let's see so over here from this false route we are not setting the text so let's let's make sure we do and for this text we want to set this to be none and now everything should be working just fine and just to be safe let's type in the default value to be none as well and now you can see that if we hover over an item it says press E to pick up, press E to open chest, press E to talk to NPC and everything is working the way it should. Off screen I'm going to adjust the location of this text of course but well I think it's simple enough to do so so I'm not going to show uh, how I do that. So that's going to be it for today's video. Hope you learned something new and I see you in the next video.